How much should I trust my inner being when it comes to learning spiritual truth? I'm Sam Martin, Senior Pastor of Red Mesa Fellowship, and you're watching Grace Talks, Episode 10. Recently, someone told me that the only way you can really know if something is true is if you sense that it's true in your gut. I've heard people say before that they've always trusted their gut and it's never let them stray. I've heard other people say that the only way anyone can really ever know if their religion is true is if it seems true to them. In Jeremiah 17.9, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitfully wicked. It is desperately sick. Who can know it? What is he saying? He's saying that your own heart is actually not trustworthy. But what is trustworthy? Well, in Psalm 119, verse 160, David says, The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. So when it comes to truth, David trusted in the law. Now, it's of note that the law was written 500 years before David wrote that, and yet David still trusted in it. When it comes to someone coming up to you and saying that I have new insight on who God is, or this is what we must do in the name of God, someone claims to be a prophet. In Deuteronomy 18, there's a test. It says in verse 20, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, How may we know the word that the Lord has has not spoken. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. So in other words, the first test is if someone says that they're a prophet and they, they claim something's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, first test failed. But there's a secondary test just in case they do actually do a sign. And that's in Deuteronomy 13. If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass, and if he says, let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. So again, how would we know whether or not that prophet or dreamer of dreams was saying, let's go worship another God? Simple. That God would simply differ from the God that they already knew. We might call that a different theology, another idea or belief about who God is or why God is. The Bible is used several times over and over again by the apostles, by John the Baptist, and by Jesus as a reference source for truth. I'll give you a good example. In John chapter 8, Jesus says in verse 31, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now how do we know we can trust Jesus Jesus seemed to trust the Bible, but how should I trust Jesus to trust the Bible? Because Jesus gave many, many, many signs. One of the greatest signs that he gave was that he he claimed that if they tore this temple down, that in three days it would be risen back up again. And he was referring, actually, to his body. And actually, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were there, they knew he was referring to his body, which is why they had the tomb guarded when Jesus was buried. So, the third day, was Jesus resurrected? Absolutely. Because Jesus was resurrected, I know that I can trust his word. Because just like his word claims, if he does a sign, and that sign comes to pass, I can trust what he's saying. Jesus also doesn't differ on who God is. He maintains God's word. He doesn't violate it in any way. In fact, he said, I did not come to abolish the law, but that through me the law might be fulfilled. So how can you trust what Jesus said is truth? Because he said it according to God's word. Jesus was quoting Exodus. Exodus was written well, 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 well before Jesus ever spoke those words, and yet he trusted them. In fact, two-thirds of the Old Testament references in the New Testament 
were quoted from a document called the Septuagint. That was the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Could Jesus or any of the apostles directly translate that from the Hebrew? Sure, but they trusted in those translations, which means there's something even more powerful about why they did that, and that is this. They trusted in the sovereignty of God. They trusted that God knew how to preserve his word. Do we believe that translations are perfect? Absolutely not. But we believe when God gave his word, he gave it perfectly. And we also believe that God is able to preserve his word. And by the way, there's nothing in reality that would ever make us question that God's word has been preserved. God's word has been preserved and there's no reason why we wouldn't believe it. So when it comes to knowing truth, know the word and the word will set you free.